are people's reactions themselves range from a deep, deep sorrow to all out anger. And the first time somebody told me that they had been angry, I was I felt so validated because I was angry too. And just so we all have the same basic information, what happened to me was really, really bad. I mean, medically speaking, an ABM, which is what I have, um, affects less than 1% of the population. A number I've seen is 0.2, 0.2%. To have a rupture at the severity level of mine is even more rare. But what really knocks out of the park is the timing and circumstances. I mean, I was in the prime of my life. I was finally able to support myself very handsomely, thriving independently. I finally had something to give, to give up. And then at that very moment, I said to myself, you know, the best thing for me to do right now would be to leave it all and go share the love of Jesus in the third world. I was like, that makes sense to me. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> you know, it didn't make sense to mom and dad. <laughs> But like, that's when this happened to me. And people have asked me questions as I've, as I've gotten better, like very serious questions. Questions that I have thought about deeply, but some stuff that I'm not gonna even repeat out here because we have some younger ears here, okay? But one question I will repeat is, was asked by uh, Joy Johnson's mother, Joy, she asked me, Ning, is it okay that you live? And to me, that is the, that's the bottom line. And she asked me that because she's the only woman in the world, only person in the world that's asked me that because she has lived in a wheelchair for 18 years. And she, her family was serving in Ethiopia and she was in a wreck that left her paralyzed from the chest down. And she asked me that so earnestly and so sweetly because she knew what I was thinking. She knew what I was thinking, and she went straight to the heart of the matter. She was like, let's put on the playground. We're just gonna, we're just gonna talk about it, because she can. When you have trauma like that, that level of trauma, like I see you, you see me, we can talk. It's fine. So the thing is, I've been waiting for this for a long time, and I'm ready now, more than probably supposed to pretend we weren't we're ready, because I had made a lot of school games this past year. And the reason I am ready is basically team Tanzania. And I have very active members that I see weekly, including a fantastic massage therapist slash artificial ortho, an amazing uh, traditional Chinese medicine doctor, quite newly skilled at what it is. And but the most active members are uh, my two trainers. I have a personal trainer and a athletic trainer. And as the structure, like how I wanted to structure this, is based on a conversation I had with them in July. I call it when we switched to the full disclosure model. Now what happened to me was so bad, I don't think I'm telling them out of any of my providers without the full story about what happened. Because it's like, how do you explain that? It's a bit of a data. You know, it's like, so yeah, I got sick, and like right before, I mean, yeah, you can imagine, it's not something that you're like, hey, FYI. I mean, they can tell from this thing over here that like, that was bad. So I, I, I just wanted to tell them everything. And the purpose of me doing that was because I need to go this out. I need to do this now because I went to Oregon earlier this year for the first time. I got sick in Oregon. I used to live in Oregon. I got sick there. And um, okay, so the thing is, like, I went to work one day and I never went home. And that's the gentle summary of what happened to me. And so we went back. I thought I was gonna die, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah, I survived. Mm -hmm. I went to Booba's house. Booba was my sister. I uh, <laughs> went to Booba's house for a couple months. It got better. And uh, came back and I was like, I was feeling so good. I was like, I feel amazing. And I was like, oh, we gotta use this opportunity. It's like that I need to talk about. Because I need their help with very specific lifestyle goals. Like, I, I don't just have a general wish to be better. I have very specific goals related to what I think the Lord is calling me to do. Baby! So like, All right, we got it done. So in July, we had this conversation. And I was like, okay, so you know I love God, right? And that's great. But 
The only reason I can look you in the eye and talk to you about this with confidence is not because I have been untouched by the situation. It's because I've already decided. And so then I opened you with this uh, analogy. I was like, okay. So there's an element of spectacle to what happened to me. It's like I got lit on fire and I jumped from a ridge into a river and I made it. Side note, I did not swim to safety on my own. I was rescued. But like, I thought a long time ago that I was like, are you serious? Like, maybe I'm overstating it. But I actually test drove it on a group of friends here. And these girls, they did not guess me to death. These girls have known me, some of them since birth, okay? They made me talk about this for like 20 or 30 minutes. They were like, oh, okay. If you're gonna say that, we really want you to be in it, okay? And I was like, well, okay, that's fine. Um, and so we talked about it for a long time. And at the end, they, they, they said, you know, yeah, you're not overstating it. We agree with you, and we are so glad to hear you summarize the situation so clearly. And so I was like, okay, we're gonna go with the spectacle analogy. So, this, like, cause I, I, I was very deeply uncomfortable with, you know, just how bad it was for a long time. I didn't want to believe that it happened because it was really, really, really bad. And I knew instinctively that it had extreme implications for everything I believed in. So I was like, for a very long time, I was like, in the hospital, I was like, you know what? APM, please, a likely scenario. I mean, who 